What I got, you can't buy. It resides between my eyes. Walk through the park, came out better on the other side. See, life's like a beach if you find the same. And right now, I feel like a hundred grand. You are listening to Inspired Insider with your host, Dr. Jeremy Wise. Dr. Jeremy Weiss here, founder of InspiredInsider.com, where I talk with inspirational entrepreneurs and leaders. I'm excited to introduce today's guest, Kelly Perdue. Before I do, I just want to point people to Kelly. I always like to point out a couple of episodes that would be interesting, and they should. Everyone should check out the David Mann and Derek Smith uh, interview I did, and that's why I have Kelly on today. He, introduction from the Firefly Group, and check them out. Uh, and you know, I was looking through your list of portfolio companies, Kelly, and um, one of them, it looks like, was acquired by Atari. So one of the interviews I had was with uh, the founder of Atari, Nolan Bushnell, who is Steve Jobs' mentor. And people should check out that interview. Uh, he talks about when Steve Jobs offered him 33% of Apple for $50,000 and why he said no. <laughs> and I'm wondering if you have one of those stories based on your investments. You're I, like, oh, kicking myself. Do you I have do. a kicking myself story? I have a kicking myself Before story. Before I formally introduce you, go ahead. Yeah. Go off with no, the kicker. Great. I, I love Nolan too. I've known him for probably 15 years here in the LA ecosystem. Uh, he's awesome. I mean, how many people uh, can, you know, say I founded companies like Atari or Chuck E. Cheese? Exactly. Um, I mean, he's, a, he's a very dynamic individual and, and still going strong. Um, so go ahead, go ahead with a kicking yourself story and I'll yeah. formally introduce you in a second. But so my, my, you know, as an investor, you know, you're going to miss deals here and there. Right. But um, I got invited uh, on this really, really hot deal uh, in this new space, you know, called augmented reality. And it was um, the only way I could get in. And this is an angel investment. So, you know, like a $25,000 check or something. But the meeting where I was going to go cement it and be able to, you know, write my check into it was in Orange County on a Friday afternoon, pre-COVID, obviously, this is a while ago. And for anybody who lives in or around the Los Angeles ecosystem, saying anything that has to do with, you know, more than one mile away from your location on a Friday afternoon in Los Angeles is like saying that's the rest of your day. <laughs> and I did not go meet with the founder um, of Oculus on a Friday afternoon. Mm. <laughs> to to probably have put my twenty five thousand dollars check in that I didn't do the multiples or the math on it, but it was an extraordinarily large dollar amount of missed opportunity and kicking myself. You know, I'm I'm researching the Oculus Two right now to purchase. I don't. Do you had, did you look into or do any of your family own Oculus? Yeah, I I I, tr- I don't typically give product recommendations, but I've heard good stuff. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I'm really curious of where do you think, you know, from a marketing perspective, I could see a lot of opportunity in this virtual reality world. Do you see the same as an investor or I'm curious what you see with this? Yeah, absolutely. I think there are some things that are going to have to change before your average consumer, you know, gets to scale. Um, one of which is, you know, the equipment, right? Um, there's a company that uh, we invested in out of Moonshots Capital Fund One called Red Six. And Red Six um, is solving a very big problem that the United States Department of Defense has, and that's training fighter pilots. Um, it's incredibly expensive, and there's, we, we don't actually own any of the kind of bad guys aircraft, especially with current capability. So it's very difficult to give a pilot an actual combat situation where they might have to go in like dogfight, basically. And you can simulate a lot of things in a simulator on the ground, but it's different when you're pulling four or five G's in a dogfight. I, I, I don't say that with experience. I say <laughs> that from having to, I'm saying that from having talked to actual fighter pilots. And what Red Six has done has been able to create an augmented reality capability in a mm-hmm. dynamic environment. That's cool. So the hit on augmented reality is you cannot walk around outside and experience augmented reality, right? Because it's got to be a closed contained area where you know all the different points in the room and you can measure so that you can portray the right video image for where your head is in context to the rest of the room. And there's probably not much more of a dynamic place in the world than in a, the cockpit of a, you know, of a fighter jet. And Red Six has been able to demonstrate that they can show an enemy aircraft mm-hmm. in augmented reality 
in the fighter's visor in the display. And that's a few steps away from, you know, average consumer walking around with glasses on and using the computer in, a, in your, you know, in your mobile device to be able to power that, a la, you know, the Terminator seeing the overlay walking around outside and really seeing it in, in, in real time with the right spatial dimensions. Yeah. And there are all sorts of problems that, have, you know, and Magic Leap has tried to solve those with billions of dollars over the years. But our little tiny red six with a specific client in mind has been able to solve it in one of the most dynamic environments in the world. So um, it is coming. Is it one year away, three years away, five years away? I'd say it's probably in the less than five, but more than two. Yeah. Yeah. Even doing research with some of the games, there's, tr you know, training games for flying an airplane. And I don't even want to begin to learn to try and do that. I just want to be totally ignorant when I go up in the air and I don't want to know that I don't want to be actually me, me driving it and crash it and right. not be worried and have bad, bad so dreams. No, so no control issues for you. When I, you're I am, that. I'm definitely, yeah, not, not going to get that game, but right. um, I'm going to formally introduce you, Kelly, um, before I do this episode is brought to you by Rise25, which I co-founded with my business partner, John Corcoran. Um, at Rise25, we help businesses. Basically, we are an easy button for them to run and launch their podcast for them. You know, over the past over 10 years of podcasting. It's been one of the best things I've done. I always like Kelly like, giving to my relationships and I've seen no better way to bring people on my platform, the people I admire, the thought leadership I want to put out in the world for other people um, and having them demonstrate that on my podcast. So if you have questions and you are looking to start or launch a podcast for your business, go to rise25.com and check it out. Um, and you know, a shout out to Bunker Labs also. And um, we have a vet, you know, I know you like military uh, background in the founders and entrepreneurs and CEOs that you invest in. And we had a veteran entrepreneur scholarship for when, when there were events. Um, and we partner with companies like Bunker Labs and we're able to have, you know, veteran entrepreneurs come to uh, the events that we have with other entrepreneurs and, and learn from each other. So um, check that out. It's rise25.com slash mission. And it's, you know, both of my, my co-founder, and my grandfathers have military experience and um, they are a big driving force of, from what we do um, as, as business owners. So uh, Kelly Purdue in short, I mean, God, Kelly, I could go on for like 20 minutes about your background in, in the companies, but I'll keep it short. And I'll let you tell the rest, but You've served in pretty much every capacity, founder, board member, CEO, COO, CFO. Um, you've raised institutional financing. You've grown businesses. You've downsized businesses. You've sold businesses. You've had eight-figure exits. You've been a board advisor, a uh, board role in the past of Pandora and LinkedIn. You know, there's a laundry list of others, operating roles in so many other fast point games. So you speak from experience as far as uh, talking about games, um, which ended up selling to WePlay and Angel Investments in so many ones, which we'll talk about ID me nimble. I mean, I've, I've, you know, heard of nimble and use nimble too. Um, and there's a laundry list of others to boot. You won the apprentice apprentice too. You're the only one that year who Donald Trump did not say you are fired to, I imagine. And, uh, <laughs> to boot MBA JD from UCLA and graduated from West point. So Kelly, thanks for joining me. I'm excited to be here. Um, what was the, impact of winning the apprentice if you you know maybe just fast forward in you know you press fast forward on a video and it goes through kind of really quickly after the apprentice how did that impact you what did you do you know what were kind of the fast forward after that yeah for sure so you know the apprentice was a reality show so i want i want to i want to and it's basically under le legally it's a game show where you win a prize at the end of it and there's a first place and a last place and there's a graduated scale of payment. Um, and my prize was, you know, 12 equal installments of like 250 grand, you know, total of 250 grand pay, paid by my then, then employer, Donald Trump, you know, enterprises. Um, and I moved to New York City and I worked with him for about 14 months. I stayed an extra two months um, because I learned a lot from him on uh, media management. And I got to do some things that I otherwise probably would not have done. I published a book. As an, as an author on applying uh, military leadership principles to business. Uh, I hosted a show on uh, the military channel called GI Factory, 
kind of a, a, a dirty jobs, if you will, for military equipment, uh, vehicles and weapon systems, which is awesome to get to go into all those factories and see exactly, you know, all the people that are there making it and how they're all made. Um, but I, I'd say that the, the biggest impact that winning that show had on me was um, I was able to take that, you know, 15 minutes of fame, if you will, that you know, got extended out to about a year because I was in New York City. Um, I got to, believe it or not, um, really build out in a strong way my LinkedIn network. And I, I actually, at the time the show was on, negotiated an advisory role with LinkedIn. This is 2004 where, you know, I talk about LinkedIn in the book that I published. I was having, you know, a million visitors a week to my website, kellyperdue.com. And I parlayed that into some advisory shares in LinkedIn and actually started using LinkedIn, you know, for its intended purpose and really network to where pretty quickly I hit the 30,000 direct connection number. Um, and for all of our portfolio companies, for the companies that I was starting and running at the time, um, I am able to leverage that network pretty extensively, whether it's through recruiting talent or business development relationships. You know, if you have the uh, kind of winner of the apprentice, you're a VC and you're investing capital and I'm a military veteran and I do an outreach to somebody and say, hey, I've got a you know, military veteran founder over here who's in cyber a CIO of whatever sprint can somebody on your team talk to them it's a pretty high response rate you know i mean we're at like 85% plus response rate so it's a pretty for me it has turned into an incredibly valuable tool and as part of that deal where i was the advisor to linkedin um they wanted me to be the face of linkedin and i don't know i'm not sure how many people remember this but they used to every couple of weeks put a famous person at you know what their pro, their profile looks like up like you know, Guy Kawasaki's or whoever, and um, Kelly Perdue, winner of The Apprentice, was the face of LinkedIn for like, you know, a brief split second. I want to see a weeks. screenshot of that. I got to look that I know, up. <laughs> I know I've got one somewhere, but um, in any event, that, you know, that has had what I believe to be an incredibly powerful lasting effect on, you know, my ability to help the entrepreneurs that we engage with. Yeah. Um, I, I want to talk about, you know, more about some of the investments and moonshots, but uh, obviously we have to ask about what, you know, working with Donald Trump, what that was like. I mean, the, when we're talking about the political climate right now, it's been very interesting compared to when you knew him then, you know, so a yeah. lot has changed uh, since then. My, uh, my business partner, Craig Cummings, um, describes that winning the apprentice is the gift that keeps on giving. Um, I, I have stayed kind of very center of the road politically and talked only about my inner you know, my personal interactions with him during that year. And this was 2005, right? So this is 16 years ago. Um, uh, in, incredibly dynamic, absolutely a deal junkie. I mean, pretty much what you saw transpiring over the last four years um, is not afraid of making a split second decision in the moment based on gut. And then, you know, I guess, re retracting or th thinking about it or getting advice or influence and changing his position later. But I, I'd say the thing that I thought was pretty amazing to watch and when he you know, announced that he was seriously in contention and running, I was like, be careful because he absolutely understands how to manage media. And I watched that occur. Uh, if you'll remember, there were different you know, seasons of The Apprentice there was a Martha Stewart apprentice. There were, you know, it was pretty hot in the reality world for a while. I think about 30 million people watched my finale. So half a Super Bowl. So it was, it was pretty big. Um, he would randomly pick a fight to get media attention. Like he fought with somebody on The View and it came out like completely out of left field. And I just watched it transpire like two weeks before the next season of The Apprentice started. Mm. And, and his knowledge and understanding of what would be responsive in the media was, was, was amazing. And I, and I took that lesson of watching that. Um, and I, and I think about it and I talk about it with our founders. 
Um, marketing is incredibly important on what you're doing. You may have the best product in the world, but if nobody knows about it, it doesn't help. So if you're not thinking competitively about how you're positioned in the marketplace and how you make noise about that, um, you're at a disadvantage. Yeah. So. Who are some of the people you were able to meet uh, because of that show? I, I remember, you know, earlier today, I just watched, there was a, there's a 10 minute version. You can watch like the whole season in 10 minutes. And so yeah. I was like, I wonder really what happened. Um, and <laughs> there were people on, I mean, they had the owner of the Patriots. Uh, you know, yeah. So who are some of the people you were able to meet because yeah, of pretty spectacular interviewing, interviewing with, with him. Um, and he had the, tr the trophy sitting there on the desk next to him at the time. He happened to be in possession of the trophy at the time. Um, but, you know, Don Hudson was then the, um, she was the president of North America for Pepsi. Um, Ace Greenberg, you know, absolutely, you know, iconic figure in the finance world. And, you know, he said when he was given his advice to Donald on the last four of us that he interviewed, I mean, they were all very, you know, nice about what they said about me, but he said, you know, Donald, Kelly is exceptional in that not only having gone to West Point and served in the military, does he know how to lead? But I think for this role working with you, he also knows how to follow, um, mm. which was an interesting comment that proved prescient <laughs> right? <laughs> for, every, for everyone. Um, but yeah, it, th throughout that next year, um, being in New York City and having had that many people watch, um, I, I met people from all walks of life. I met, you know, other billionaires from real estate. I met uh, TV personalities. I, you know, I was on um, Jay Leno show. Like, it, I mean, the stuff that I got to do was literally, you know, it's that split second, but, you know, it's, it makes, it's good, it's Pretty good amazing. photos, it's good memories. I show the kids and they laugh and, you know, it's, it's, it's just a, Flash in a pan, really, really lucky experience to be able to do something like that. It's amazing. Um, what was the most challenging thing, project that you, because you worked on a lot of things, it sounded like with, from launching like Trump ice, you know, the water to working on the real estate to you, it talked about their suit company. I mean, they have their hands in, in so many different companies. <laughs> what was the most challenging? Well, I'll, I'll tell you what was pretty fascinating on the way in was, so. I, I showed up for the first day of work. I think the show finale was in like December 14th or the end of, middle of December. And then first day of work was ostensibly like the first month, whatever, the first Monday after New Year's, right? Whatever that was, January 4th or whatever. And um, so I showed up and everybody's like, what are you doing here? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, I won. I'm scared. I came to like, I'm like, oh, okay. And I ended up, you know, <laughs> on Fifth Avenue in the building, figuring out what to do. So it was kind of a figure, figure it out on my own and see what, see what, uh, see what I could come up with. And the first thing I asked for it was I wanted to see the portfolio. I'm like, who manages the portfolio? Cause he's got his name on buildings, board games, alcohol. Like it's just, you know, the litany of, bra of branding elements, right? Licensing deals. And then there's obviously the real estate business and all the other components. And um, figuring out what to work on, I think was probably an, an interesting challenge because there was a lot of other stuff that I wanted to get done wh while I was also learning about real estate. Cause I did not come from real estate. So I spent a lot of my time with George, who was kind of his right hand consigliere, if you remember at the time, yeah. who by himself rolled up like a hundred radio stations across the Midwest and sold them. That was like his, you know, how he got to it, but he was like 80 at the time, maybe. And still took the train in you know, the subway in polished his own shoes, mm. like old school, very, um, you know, fit like a, like a glove with the kind of the West point background that I had. So I, I, and I, and he's the, he was the commercial commercial real estate guy. So he was like on the commercial brokers for renting out space. And I, I, I learned a lot from spending yeah. a lot of time with George. Kelly, I could listen to your stories probably for the next few hours. I know we have limited time. <laughs> <laughs> um, and there's so many channels we can go over, but I wanted to hit on, you know, two, well, more than that, but two portfolio companies you could talk briefly about Gretel and ID me and, and first just talk about the criteria, your selection criteria. There's a page you can go to moonshotscapital.com and go to their selection criteria. And I'm wondering overlaying 
those two. Were there any that they didn't hit that you of why you decided? And then we could talk about it, but anyone could check it out because if you're wondering um, and thinking, well, maybe I am a candidate, I am a company because Kelly probably gets lots of pitches. How many pitches do you think you get a month? We're in between year? 100 and 150 yeah. a month. Depends on the month. Yeah. So read this before maybe you pitch them to see if you're fit. <laughs> Important uh, to, call, yeah. to, call, to call out the criteria. And yeah. I will say, if you if Craig and I have looked back at um, our investments from from the fund one and now in fund two, and you know, no no company meets every one of the criteria elements. Okay. <laughs> so we're like, but all of them meet a majority of the criteria elements. Yeah. So when we're when we're first and foremost, we're looking for extraordinary leadership. And what we mean by like Nowhere in the world is millions of dollars spent training people in leadership per se, other than the military. So, and we happen to have a really good network there. So for background checking and getting data points on these individuals, it's, it's phenomenal, not only for us, but for the entrepreneur who happens to have that military background, they can use their channel to find out about us, right? So when you meet up, if you've passed the sniff test both ways, there's already a level of trust, common background, shared vernacular that really accelerates that trust, which is super important when you're working with, with investors. Mm. So it's not exclusive. About half of our AUM has gone into teams with military veterans on them, but half of them ha haven't. We're just looking for that extraordinary leadership capability, first of all. And you asked about um, Gretel and IDME for, specifically. So, so Gretel um, was founded by Alex Watson. And um, Alex, we, we, Craig and I, through the years, started as angels, you know, writing those checks, then moved into leading syndicates, meaning we gather up other angels and invest those, invest those on syndicates on our own. We've done, I think, 40 of those now. And then we moved into committed funds where we could deploy capital with conviction when we decided to and didn't have to go round, round up the capital to be able to execute and move that way. And we like to lead. We like to take that, you know, lead position and invest you know, late seed rounds when there's a product moving, some annual recurring revenue in place, kind of, they know the dogs are kind of eating the dog food, team's not completely set, maybe pricing's not completely figured out, but we, Craig and I, with our operating experience can help those founders accelerate. Yeah. Cause you roll up your sleeves with the, with the companies you invest in. We, we do, yeah. um, on, on the ones we lead for sure. And sometimes when we're, we like the entrepreneur founder and they make room for us in a deal that we like, we'll put money and we'll still help, but it, when we're leading and taking a board seat, we take that very seriously and want to help the entrepreneurs not mm -hmm. make the mistakes that Craig and I have previously made. So, um, so Gretel, Alex Watson, uh, we previously had led a syndicate into his, in, in the company that he ran before called Harvest AI. And Trinity Ventures came in while we were raising the syndicate and led a seed round. We rolled into that seed round. I went onto the board with Alex and the Trinity VC we sold that company to Amazon in about 18 months. Successful, Alex went into Amazon. That product rolled out in AWS to much fanfare. Did a great job. I stayed on Alex. I knew when his end date was for his lockup. Period. <laughs> your alarm go off on your phone. <laughs> and, and, I, every, and, the, and the six months before he was out weekly, I pinged him. I slow water torture dripped him to death and said, where are we sending the next check for the next deal that's happening? And Big and compliment here, to him. In a very competitive um, race, we won leading the seed round. So we, uh, we did a three and a half million dollar seed round into his next business with very accomplished co-founders, which made it super easy and like we did it. We had to go up in price or else they were going to go to a, like, you know, a tier one, very well-known brand name fund and take a bigger amount. And we said, no, 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 take less, good price, less dilution, build it out and you can get a lot more from those big boys later. So Greylock quickly followed us into the seed and took the rest of the seed round. And then just in, um, at the end of this, uh, at the end of 2020 led, led to a round. And Alex is a phenomenal leader, hardcore technology driven, brilliant, and it sur has surrounded himself with a killer team trying to solve, solve a very, very big problem. So that one was a known founder to us where there was a lot of trust. Again, trust is super important. And he, he was willing to work with us early um, to develop the, the prototype, get the beta out and, and get attract enough interest to raise a series A round of financing. I love it. I know we're right at the half hour. We could end it. Or if you want to 
uh, mention ID me, that's fine. Yeah. So I, I, the, the ID me story is becoming uh, a bigger and bigger deal. So um, Blake Hall, a uh, military veteran, Iraq war hero, Harvard Business School, um, wanted, wanted to build a company. And he talked to an investor in New York who put a little money into him while he was couch surfing, eating tuna fish and ramen, the normal entrepreneurial life, right? Mm -hmm. Not taking the job at McKinsey, not taking the job at Goldman, but pursuing this dream of, bu of building a company. And the, the investor in New York said, oh yeah, you're a military veteran. You should talk to Kelly in Los Angeles. He's a buddy of mine. He, he's, a, he's a military veteran. He likes investing in military veterans. So I got the phone call that sounded like, you know, a military guy, he goes, sir, this is Blake Hall. Like, you know, and I like sat up a little straight, like I haven't heard this in a long, like in a while. And um, we got to know each other and then we became friends and I, I have helped him all that I can to the point he's, su he's such an amazing individual and leader on how he operates that I've learned more from him, I think, than he's learned from me. Hmm. And we've evolved the company now. You have probably seen all of the uproar in the media about the fraud that has occurred on unemployment claims and the payouts that have gone to Russian, Chinese, Nigerian, organized crime, you name it, just massive amounts of fraud. And IDME has built an online identity verification capability that's in use with the VA already over the years. This is, a, this is one of those 11 year overnight success stories. Um, they rolled out with California recently. They're enabling you to not to spend three hours at the DMV by doing a whole bunch of stuff online. Sign me up. Uh, yeah. Sign I'm everyone up. Not to go to the DMV. Wow. Right? That's the tagline. 50 bucks. And then they think for a second, they, no, no, I'd pay a hundred. I'd pay up to 500 bucks. And billion dollar company by solving the problem of going to the DMV. <laughs> so so yes. um, USAA led the A round. FTV Capital led the B round. We're in the process of a really, a, a, a really amazing uh, next round of financing right now. And Blake embodies, is kind of the poster child for what we talk about in terms of, you know, being able to execute, be co being coachable, um, understanding leadership, understanding that you need to surround yourself with people who do things better than you do. All of those things you read about in the books, the actual execution of those things is really hard to do. And, and he's been yeah. phenomenal at that. So, and I've been, you know, a board member and mentor for the last 10 years. But the story there is there have been two pivots. So as an entrepreneur, you are going to have very, very, very tough times and tough days. And it's important for you to have investors, mentors, personal advisors, uh, board members from the investor standpoint, and team members that understand that it is not all roses and rainbows all the time. Um, but if you stick to it, and, and stay smart and understand what's happening in the marketplace, you can create some incredible value. Yeah. Kelly, I want to be the first one to thank you. It pains me to end this interview, but um, everyone should check out moonshotscapital.com. If you know of a company or you are a company that you think is a fit, check out their, you know, what their criteria is, reach out to them and um, just check out what their scholarship, you know, what I'm looking for, Kelly, is your next book. Like I want to listen to or read your next book whenever that is. So everyone check it out and, and thanks for listening. Awesome, Jeremy. Thanks for having me. What I got, you can't buy. It resides between my eyes. Walked through the fire, came out better on the other side. See, life's like a beach if you find the sand. And right now, I'm feeling like a hundred grand.